We were an agrarian society for tens of thousands of years. <laughs> and the Industrial Revolution was like five minutes ago, right? There are ways in which we have inherited ideas about family, about marriage, about property, about gender, uh, from a time in which it kind of was the way it had to function. And it, that's not the way it has to function now. Sexual flourishing is a part of the wholeness of being a created being. I mean, that is part of our health. Messages from religion, those go down to our created place, our source code. Those seep into us in a very deep level. I think a lot of the sort of uh, really misogynistic interpretations of scripture and also the fear of sex stuff that came into Christianity came in with a lot of the church fathers, a lot of the original interpretation, you know, interpreters of these texts and theologians in the Christian tradition. If God is so concerned about us not experiencing pleasure, how do you explain the clitoris, right? Literally, the only purpose of the clitoris is female sexual pleasure. That was given to us by the Creator, right? So to me, it's like going back to origin is really important with this stuff and really teasing apart other people's BS about it because it's all meant to lead us into freedom. I'm stealing a move from Martin Luther and I'm saying the teachings of the church around sex and gender and sexuality have hurt the people in my care. How can I presume to think that the gospel, again going back to just teachings of Jesus, how can this free these people from the harm that even the church has done them? And the actual truth is that Every single human being is simultaneously sinner and saint, 100% of both, all the time. We are a dualistic kind of people. And when we think we're all good, the, the sort of bad part of us ends up coming out sideways and becoming actually more potent. And when we think we're all bad, we can't live in that flourishing of the amazing parts of us. And so to sort of hold these two things in tension and go, look, being a human is a paradox. There's no purity to be had here. When the central message of a community is grace, which is the central message at House for All Sinners and Saints, when it's grace, then people end up uh, making pretty good decisions for themselves, self-respecting decisions without the church having to tell them what that needs to look like.